Isaiah uh, chapter number 7, and I'll read one verse, verse 14, a very familiar verse. And uh, he said in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, Therefore <clears throat> the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Then if you go to Matthew chapter number 1, and verse 18, it talks, he's talking to, uh, to Joseph. And he says in Matthew 1, 18, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother, Mary, was a spouse of Joseph, before they came together, she found him with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while... He told him these things. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, was spoken of the Lord by the prophet. What we just read, Behold, a virgin shall be with the child and shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Emmanuel which to be interpreted is God with us then Joseph being raised from sleep did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him took him into his wife and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus if you notice in Isaiah chapter 14 this is a prophecy this is a prophecy long before Christ ever come that a virgin would conceive and bring forth a son and they would call his name Emmanuel, starting with an I. Then you come to Matthew, and he says the same thing. He says, this is brought to pass that the, the prophecy might be fulfilled. Uh, they would bring forth a son, call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Of course, in the New Testament, it's, it's spelt with an E. The Old Testament is spelt with I. No contradiction in that. The reason for that, in the Old Testament, it's the way the Hebrews spelled it and spoke of it. It started with an I. You come to the New Testament, it's the way the Greeks wrote it and spoke of it, and it started with an E. No condition, it means the same thing. And I want to preach or just talk a few minutes on that word, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. He said, Behold, uh, uh, he shall be called Emmanuel, which has been interpreted, God with us. If you look up the word of Emmanuel, and I'm not a big Hebrew and Greek person, uh, but every once in a while you can look up something, it'll help you. If you look the word up, Emmanuel, the word with, the word with is E-E-M. Uh, and, and then if you look up the word us, uh, it's A-N-U. And if you look up the word God, it's E-I. And if you put that together, it says Emmanuel. And it, which means with us, God. With us is God. That's a, that's a deep thought to think that as lowly as we are and worthless we are, that God would chose to be with us. Amen. That God would even choose to live within us. Yeah. It's just a miracle that God would even choose to meet with us. Amen. Would we come and meet like this in fellowship? Yeah. But that's what it means. With us is God. Or with us, God. In Hebrew, it's a sentence. It's a sentence. Uh, with us, God. Yeah. It's a sentence. They their sentences were different than ours. But if you'd ask the word Emmanuel uh, uh, in the Hebrew time, they'd say that means with us, God. With us, God. He's with us all the time. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a declaration, a declaring, declaring in the Hebrews. With us is God. With us, God. It's a declaring. When you say Emmanuel and you say it strong, it means with us, God. Amen. And then it's also a reality. God is with us. Amen. It's not just a joke. It's not a myth. Right. But God is with us. Right. And I thought, about, I thought about several ways that God is with us. I thought about, first of all, he's, he's with us through His Word. Uh, at the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was God. God left us His Word. And when we, when we have this Bible and we have... And I believe everything that, that God has to say to us is right here. Uh, if He wanted us to know anything else, He'd put it in here. 
And we're, we're past the days of dreams and revelations. Amen. Uh, God has spoken us through his word. If he says anything, he'll say it through here. You say, I don't know what God says. Get in here and you'll find out what he said. And, and so in the beginning was the word, the word with God. And we know this. This is God. Amen. The Bible you hold in front of you is God. So God has allowed us to have a copy of the word of God. What does that mean? Emmanuel with us, God. Through his word. He is with us through his word. John chapter number uh, 15 and verse number 7. It says, it ab if you abide in me, my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will, it shall be done. What he's saying is, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. In other words, if you abide in his words, his words will abide in you. What is that? God with us through his word. Uh, over in the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in all, dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In other words, he said, let the word of God dwell in you. Amen. And that's what it is. You take this Bible, you read this Bible. This Bible is God. In the beginning it was God. Word, the Word was God. So when you read this, it's taking God and putting it inside of our hearts. Even though He lives there, He's in us with His Word. Amen? That's why He said, hide the Word in your heart that you might not sin against God. See, God is in us to, uh, 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 as a defense. God is in us as a comforter. God's in us and He's there in His Word. I remember when I was in Vietnam, I remember I'd get a letter from home. And few fellas know what, when you was in Vietnam, if you was out in the boonies like we was, you didn't get mail every day. And uh, sometimes it'd be a, a while before you got any mail, especially in the monsoon season. They'd come in and you didn't see nobody in the monsoon season except rain and, uh, and fog and they couldn't get into you. And, uh, but we'd get a letter from home. I'd get a letter from my mom. You know what I'd do? I'd read it every day. I'd read it till I got another letter from home. And I'd have it memorized. <laughs> I wouldn't have to uh, get it out and read it. I could just about memorize it and quote it because I'd read that letter and read that letter. And my friend, that letter got in my heart, got in my mind, and it become a part of me, and I would hold on to that till I got another letter. Amen. It's that letter that my mother wrote, the words that she wrote was in me, bringing me courage when I'm praying for you. And saying things about home and different things. And that word helped me in the battle times. Helped me in the hard times. That word was dwelling. That letter from home. And I'll tell you what. This is a letter from home. <laughs> and this is God. And God has allowed us to have this. And we can put this in us. And guess what? It'll bring comfort, uh, heart, uh, uh, happiness, and strength to go on. In the so God is with us in his word. But also God is with us in his spirit. You know when you get saved, you know what happens when you get saved? You know this. The Holy Spirit comes and lives in your heart. Amen. When you get born again by His grace. See, before, before uh, uh, Pentecost, before the Holy Ghost come and fell, uh, in, in the Old Testament and up until Pentecost, the Holy Ghost would just come, fall upon you, brother, so they, and do a work, and then it would leave. It would come upon Samson, you know. And he had to slay those. And he'd come upon different ones and situation. And he come and left. But when Pentecost come, everything changed. And when you get born again, he no longer comes and leaves. But he comes and dwells in your heart permanently. Amen. And I got saved. The Holy Ghost come. And he's been abiding inside of me for 60 something years that I've been saved. So he is, the, the, he is with us. Emmanuel, God, is with us. How? Not only in his word, but in his spirit. See, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, they're three in one. In fact, in the book of John 14, he said, I will pray the Father, and he, will, he shall send you another comforter. That means one just like me. That he may abide with you forever. Now watch this. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it saith it not, neither knoweth him, but you know him. What? For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Amen. In other words, he said, when the Holy Ghost comes, he's going to be in you. And just to be honest with you, and, and I don't know if I shared this with you before, but for years I've always just preached when you get saved, the Holy Ghost comes and He's in you. And you got saved and you asked the Lord Jesus to come in your heart. I don't care if He's here in the altar, I don't care if He's riding down the road. But when you trusted Christ, guess what? The Holy Ghost came in you right. and took it a, a dwelling inside of you to live in your heart. And He stays there till Jesus comes and, and my soul and the Holy Ghost will go out of here. But you ever notice what He said, Brother Phil? It didn't just say 
he shall be in you. But he said, for he will dwell with you. And in you. He's not only in me, but he's with me. You say, well, what's, what's, what's special about that? Well, for years, for years, I traveled by myself. Not my choice, but there's things. Okay, we, we started out, all of us raising, uh, driving a motor home years ago. Well, that was a mistake. And uh, Kay was expecting. We had Whitney, and she was expecting Kevin. And uh, we bought a motor home, went to evangelism. Well, that didn't work. Number one, she's trying to teach Whitney all the time and uh, trying to do lessons and everything, go to church. And another thing is when we went, when she came down the hall, we couldn't pass. Nobody could pass. She was expecting. And so uh, it was miserable inside that motor home. And she said, I can't do this. So she went home and stayed home, and I traveled. She raised the boys and kept them in school and kept them everything at the home front going. Then her, her, uh, we had a grandbaby for several years that lived with us. And then her mother and daddy got sick and we moved in with us. For numbers of years, numbers of years, I traveled by myself. But everywhere I'd go, Brother James, everywhere I'd go, she was in here. She was in here. I'd ride down the road and I'd think of her. She's in here. I would get in a motel rooms and uh, by myself. But yet she was in here because she was in my heart. And I talked about her because she was in here. But a few years ago, when I left the church, everybody's gone from the house, and she's by herself. And so ever since then, she's traveled with me. Amen. She's traveled uh, about every meeting. I think she's missed a couple of meetings, uh, revivals that we went through. Uh, and she's been with me ever since. And I was coming down the highway a while back with that, and she was sitting over there, and I had a spell. I shouted and scared her to death. I was riding down the road, and he hit me. I said, for years, she is in me in me but I looked over and I said not only are you in me but you're with me now and I'm glad God is not only in us but whatever we go through whatever we face if we're in the storm she's with me if the suns are shining she's with me and by it's you glad God said Emmanuel with God I'm with you and no matter what you face I'm with you <laughs> not only in you but with you amen that's a big difference amen Come on now, help me out. That's a big difference. I thought about, I thought about he's in us uh, to teach us. John 14, 26, he said, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, uh, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Bring it all things to remembrance whatsoever I've said in you. He's in here to teach us. He said, what does he teach us? He teaches this. You can't understand this. Natural man understands not the things of God. That's right. But boy, the spiritual man understand it. Why? Because the Holy Ghost lives in here. The Holy Ghost penned this down. And so he knows what it is. He knows what it says. And he's with us to teach us what the Word of God is. You ever, you ever get one of them verses of Scripture you don't know what it means? You ever look at one of them verses of Scripture and think, what in the world is he talking about here? And you go to the store and buy a commentary and they skipped it. Amen? A little, a little advice. When you go to buy a book at the store, and you're looking for something particular, look it up before you buy it and see if they say anything about it. Because you'll pay $25 for a book, get home, they skip it. Amen? And I tell you what, I've done that before. Couldn't find nobody. You know what? But I'd get in my Bible, get along somewhere, and I'd get to pray it and say, I'd say, God, show me. I don't know what this is talking about. You know what? The Holy Ghost that would bring to my remembrance of things and put scriptures with it and put it together. And my friend, and I would know what he said, why the Holy Ghost is the one that penned it down. Well, if Brother Josh back here, I got you right this time. I've been practicing all day. Amen. I ain't got Buford right yet, but I'm trying. But if Brother Josh back there wrote a book, say he wrote a book about whatever, and he gives me one of them books, and I'm reading that book, and I don't know what he's talking about. I thought, what's, what's uh, Josh talking about here? And I go over here, and I asked him, I said, what, what do you think, what do you think about, Brittany, what do you think Josh talking about right here? You know what you do? You'll give me your, your opinion. So I got your opinion and my opinion. Now, I'm not happy, I'm not satisfied, so I go over to Thad. I said, Thad, if you got that book that, that uh, Josh wrote, yeah, uh, what does he mean right here? Josh, or Thad gave me his opinion. So I got her opinion, his opinion, my But if I really want to know what he says and what he meant, I'll go ask him. He wrote the book. <laughs> Amen. If you ain't careful, you'll run around and find out what somebody thinks about there, what somebody said. What somebody, if you really want to know, if you're saved, you got the Holy Ghost in your heart, 
Go ask the Holy Ghost. He's the one that came upon these men and penned it down. Amen. He's there to teach us. In us. God is with us to teach us. He's there, my friend, to testify of himself. Uh, John 15, 26. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send uh, the Father, even the Spirit of truth, whom shall proceed from the Father, he shall testify of me. God is with us. You know what he's talking about? Himself. You know what you're going to testify? You're say, uh, about him. Amen. He's there with us and he testifies. Him. My, my, daddy, my daddy used to tell me all the time, and, and I, I'm not as bad as it used to be, I don't guess. Uh, but uh, he used to tell me, son, if you, if you couldn't preach and say something about your wife and your kids, you couldn't preach a lick. And I'd always use them for illustrations. I'd use my boys and use Kate for illustration. And I told him one day, I said, well, daddy, I live with them. I know more about them than I do anybody else. And I'm going to tell you what, when you live with Christ and you, and you read his word, you fellowship with Christ and he lives within you, you know what you're going to do? You're going to talk about him. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost is going to testify of him. He's not going to brag on you. Amen. That's what's wrong with a lot of preachers. They brag on themselves and don't brag on the Lord. Amen. And then he's there not only to teach us and testify, but he's there to guide us. The Bible said in John 16, 33, he said, when the Holy Ghost has come, how been the Spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. Boy, ain't you glad we got the Holy Spirit guiding us and leading us in the direction we should go. How many times the Holy Ghost has spoke to your heart and said, do this, or do that, or give here, or say a word, or testify. Amen? You better be careful when you testify. Don't testify, just testify. Amen? Sometimes I've seen people get up testifying, and kill a meeting. You know why? They didn't have nothing to say. And the Lord wasn't really speaking to them to say anything. But boy, when the Lord speaks to your heart, sometimes I've seen it happen. The Lord speaks to your heart. I, I remember one time in the meeting when they just dry as dead. And boy, I mean, the singing was dead. And I got up to preach. And the little girl sitting on the front seat, she said, can I say something? And she, I said, yes, ma'am, you can say something. The little bitty girl. And she stood up and started talking about how she got saved. How God saved her. And next thing I know, brother, I mean the Holy Ghost come breezing through that place and it broke out. I never did get to preach. It just broke out. And shout, that little old girl had a testimony of the Lord. Amen. He said he'll testify me. So Emmanuel, God with us. He's with us in his word and he's with us in the Holy Spirit. Well, let me give you this and I'll be through. I, I, told, I told Brother Tad back there a while ago, I said, you ever heard that phrase, S-O-S? I said, I've got S-S-O tonight, short, sweet, and out. Amen? <laughs> but uh, uh, I sat down over there, I sat down over there, and, and I added a letter to it, short, sweet, out, and hot dog. Amen? <laughs> but anyway, uh, Emmanuel uh, means God with us, with us. Amen. And in fact, over in Hebrews, he said, I'll never leave you. Amen. Never forsake you. Amen. But I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. Yep. Amen? We turn it around, you know this. They leave, they need forsake, never will I. No matter which way you're going, wherever you're going, he said, I'm with you. Right. Amen. Your wife said that. <laughs> but there's times she can't be there. Your husband said that. Oh, forever. You know, this is ever commitment. But sometimes we can't be with each other. But God never leaves us. Permanent dwelling. Never. I'll never leave you. So God's always with us. He's always in us and he's always with us. Then I thought about this. I'll throw this out. We'll be through. I thought about first of all, he's with us in our sorrows. John chapter 11. You remember when, when uh, uh, Lazarus died? Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up. And Mary and Martha's heart, both was broken. And I know Mary had one attitude and Martha had another attitude. But both of their hearts was broken and they was in sorrow because they'd lost their brother. And the Bible said, he talks about him. He said, uh, uh, where have you laid him? And they said, uh, come and see. And they, they started out through there. And Martha, you know, she said, well, Lord, he's been dead for three days and all that stuff. But the Bible said, when, and, and it said, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the, the Jews also weeping, which was with her, he said, Jesus wept also. Yeah. They was weeping because of sorrow. Guess what? He wept with them. You know, when sorrow's coming, we weep, he weeps. Yeah. Amen? When he weeps, he weeps. I remember, I remember we had, we had uh, some kids, little kids, and, and one of them started crying. And she would fell or something, and she was a crying. And uh, her sister was a crying. And, and somebody said, well, what are you crying for? She said, I'm crying because she's crying. I'm crying because she got hurt. You know what? They were sisters, and they loved each other. And one felt the pain of the other one. Ain't you glad God, thank God, he is acquainted with us. And when we were in sorrow, 
He's with us. Yes. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In other words, when our loved ones is in death, we're going through the shadow of death with them. Guess what? He's with us. Emmanuel, he's right there with us in there. I think about it in Isaiah chapter 53. The Bible said he's a man of sorrows. The acquainted with grief. Aren't you glad when, when, when sorrow time comes, Emmanuel, he's with us. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Sometimes friends come and go, but he's right there. Amen? Amen. He's right there. I remember, I remember when my mother passed away, uh, my, uh, we had all kinds of people come, and they counted over 500 at my mother's funeral back, in, back 30 years ago. And, and, uh, and, and my brothers and sisters and, and my dad, uh, I tried to carry them. Uh, Joshua tried to be strong and carry them uh, through that time. And, and I never will forget, we had the funeral. You know, we buried my mother right outside our front yard where we lived at that time. And uh, uh, I never will forget, everybody started leaving. And, and the preachers started leaving. And Fred started leaving. And, and my brother and sister started leaving. And I found myself standing out there by myself. And everybody's gone. And it hit me. <laughs> it hit me. I thought, oh, man. It hit me like a ton of brick up until then. All I was interested in is trying to help my brothers and sisters through all that. But all of a sudden, that sorrow of death hit me. That mother was gone. And I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to do? And about that time, the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart. said, I would be, but not have you ignorant, brother, concerning which you sleep, that you sorrow not as others. Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and said, son, this ain't it. <laughs> it's at the end of it. Aren't you glad when we're in our sorrows? God, Emmanuel, God is with us. Then I thought about He's not only with our sorrows, He's with us in our storms. Sometimes when we get in storm, you know, we lose sight. We lose sight of the Lord. But over in the book of Mark, chapter number 14, you remember when the disciples was in the storm, and Jesus had done said, go over to the other side. And the Bible said the storm came. Jesus went down to the bottom of the ship, went to sleep. Storm winds begin to blow. The waves begin to come in. They started casting out stuff, trying to bring things in. They was all tore up and nervous. And all of a sudden, one of them said, hey, we better go down to get the bottom and get the ship and get Jesus. And the Bible said he went down and woke him up and said, Lord, cares not we perish. And he spoke up. He said, oh, you little faith. I'm here. <laughs> ship ain't going to go under number one because I'm here and I still got to go to Calvary. Good. Ship ain't going to go under because I told you we was going to the other side. Ain't you glad God's with us in the storm? Look, sometimes we look like we're going to go under. It looks like the storm's going to roll over us and tire us up. The Holy Ghost comes and speaks to our heart. Because he said, I'm with you. I'm right here. Ship ain't going down. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> and how they just speaks in the peace and the storm waves down. Even in the book of Acts, chapter 27, Paul and was one of the greatest storms there was outside of the flood. And the storms was blowing and they'd done everything. Yeah. And I found that all of a sudden, now listen, the wind's still blowing and the waves are still coming and the, the danger's still there. Paul goes down to the bottom of the ship and gets to pray and gets a hold of God. And he comes back. Can you imagine, Brother Slick, uh, uh, Slick how, them, they, how stupid he looked? Winds are blowing. Looks like he's going to go under any moment. And Joe, Paul walks up and says, Be a good chair. <laughs> I believe God. We're not going to lose no love. You know why? God was with them in the ship. Aren't you glad God's with us in the storms? Yeah. Think about how many storms you went through and you think, boy, we ain't going to make this one. <laughs> you're, you're here, ain't you? <laughs> and you know what's so funny about this? I was reading this about the Acts 27 the other day. I was reading this. And what's so funny? The storm never quit. The storm never quit. Right. But they had peace. Right in the middle of it. You don't find them restless no more. You don't find them throwing out good cargo no more. Huh? God said, I'm with you. I'm with you so strong. You're not going to lose one hair off your head. Boy, aren't you glad God, Emmanuel, is with us in our storms. So it's in our sorrows. He's with us in our stand. Sometimes, you know, you take a stand for God. You take a stand for what's right. You know what you wonder sometimes? Am I, am I right? Sometimes we feel like we're alone. Amen? I, th I, I, thought, about, I thought about them Hebrew boys and Daniel. I thought about them. Boy, they took a stand. They made that false god. Said, we're going to play the music. And everybody bowed down. Well, okay. And them three boys didn't bow. They took a stand. Right. You know what? They laid hands on them and said, hey, it's understanding you didn't bow. We're going to give you another chance to bow. We're going to play the music again. And if you bow, well. But if not, 
we're going to throw you in the fire furnace. And they said, oh, be it known unto you, we're not going to bow. We're not going to bow. Our God is able. They took a real stand for God. They even took such a stand for God. And the enemy had such a hold on them, Brother Slick. They didn't get out of the fire furnace. They still had to go in it. And they laid hands on them. Put them. I think about Brother Roloff took such a stand. Still had to go to jail. Right. Amen. Still had to suffer hardship. I think about Paul took a stand. He still had to go to jail. But look what come out of there. <laughs> them Hebrew boys, can you imagine how they felt? We've took a stand. We've took a stand. And they laid hands on them. Maybe I don't know what they're thinking, but maybe they're headed toward that fiery furnace and they laid hands on them. They're headed to it. They feel the heat of the fiery furnace and they think, oh man, I don't know what's going through their mind, but they pitch them in and they pitch them in the fiery furnace. And the Lord's walking around down there and said, Boy's been waiting on you. <laughs> what took you so long to get here? And they're walking around in that, that fiery furnace. And they took a stand. But guess what? God was with them. Right. You say the fire wasn't real. Well, those guys that throwed him in got burnt and died. Yeah. Yeah. Something burnt the bands off. Yeah. Amen. They're walking around. <laughs> but you're glad God's with us in our stand. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't see him until we get all the way in, but he's there. Same thing with Daniel. Throw Daniel in the lion's den. Lord, done showed up. Shut the mouth lines. Aren't you glad God's with us when we take a stand for God? God is with us. Right. Amen. I remember my dad years ago, we lived in Andrews, North Carolina. Daddy took a real stand about some things. And uh, there, was a, there was a guy, uh, Richard uh, Wal Waldrop, that was his name? Richard Wal Waldrop, I think his name. I know his name's Richard. And I was still at home, man. And they took a real stand about some things out of that church and in that town. And uh, Mr. Waldrop seen Daddy downtown one day. He was a truck driver. What well, healthy man. Drove a truck. Every, all, all, every week he was a, a, drove it on the road, a truck driver. Daddy had arthritis. If you know my daddy, he had arthritis in his hands and arthritis in his jaw and had a lot of uh, physical problems with arthritis. And, he, he, and that guy met him downtown. And said, Preacher, you need, to, you need to make some changes in what you've said. The stand you've took, it's just going to cause problems in the town. It's going to even problem, cause problems in the church. And Dad said, hey, I ain't changing nothing. God put it in my heart. It's in the Bible. Now make a stand. And the guy took his fist and hit Daddy right upside the head. Right down on the streets of Andrew, North Carolina. He hit my Daddy right upside the head. And my Daddy kept come back and the Holy Ghost spoke to his heart. He said, leave it alone. I'll take care of it. Less than 30 days. Now listen to this. Less than 30 days. That truck driver was struck with arthritis. Within 30 days, his leg has pulled up back behind his head. His hands is all like that. He laid in the bed and died. Died known as a man that hit a preacher that had arthritis. You say, what happened? God was with him. God was with my daddy in that door. Amen. Amen. He says it's awful for him. Well, he's the one that he's the one that let the devil influence him. Right. You better be sure, careful what you do, God, God, there is a chastening God. Right. And he was known. He, he was known and died. You can go over to Andrews now and mention his name. And people will say, Oh, we remember him. He's the one that hit that preacher. Died. Unless it no just a few months later. You know why? Oh, God's with us in our stand. Sure. He takes care of us and helps us. Amen. He's not only with us in our storms and our stand and our sorrows. He's with us in our short faith. Sometimes our faith is just short. Amen. Just not enough, it seems like. Yeah. You remember when you remember when uh when uh Peter was standing down and the Lord come walking in water, he said, Lord, if it be thou bid me to come unto thee. Peter said, Come on. <laughs> you better be careful what you ask. <laughs> you may get to come on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes we pray, whatever it takes, Lord, be careful when you pray that. Because you don't know what it's going to take. He said, oh, if it's you, let me walk on the water. He said, well, come on. And he walked on the water. He's looking at the Lord. He's walking on the water. But all of a sudden, he's in the wind, boisterous in the waves. He lost sight of God. You know what happened? He began to seek. Sure. When he began to seek, guess what? The Lord's right there. <laughs> right there with him. He just picked him up and went right on in that ship. Boy, aren't you glad when our faith is short and our faith is weak? Ain't you glad God is still with us? He's still there to help us. He's still there to take over. He's still there to work in our hearts, in our lives. Amen.
my my boys my boys they do things and, and especially my youngest son he he'll get involved in something and, uh, working in something and plumbing or whatever he'll get involved in that and you know what he'll do he'll get he'll get brother James into a place that he can't he can't get get there you know he's not not where he understands it all he runs into problem and guess what he'll say call me he'll call me <laughs> he'll tell his wife say call call daddy he's under the house a while back he called said call daddy <laughs> and I went over and crawled up in there and he said daddy uh, I, I'm at a place here I don't know what, what to do and I was laying there looking at it and I tell you I said I tell you what you've done wrong I said you need to back up and do this and do that and I said it'll work okay it'll work fine and uh, you know what he was fault he kept saying I'm going to have to call plumber and it's going to cost me forever it's going to cost me big money and he called me and I, I don't know everything but no little stuff you know what he called me and I was there I went right there and tried to help him you know what we got it done saved him a lot of money weren't you glad God sometimes in our shortness of faith we think well I'm going to quit I'm going to do this I'm going to do that and God is standing there let me help you <laughs> let me help you good illustration of this is is when my son graduated from high school, and I've told this a thousand times, but uh, my son's in high school, and he was graduating. He was going on a little senior trip, and he came in there and told his mama, he said that they had to have so much to eat on and so much for this and that, whatever. And that will forget, he came in and I heard him. He's talking to his mama. And he said, Mama said, I, and, and my boy's a word, he, he's, a, he's a perfectionist like his daddy, but he said Dad, mama I, I had his money in his hand and he said I got this much to eat on I got this much for that and I got this and he said but I still like a little here and I still like a little there I don't know what I'm going to do and uh, Kay said well why don't you ask your daddy to help you so he gathered it all up and he came in my office and he said daddy can I talk to you a minute and I said yeah that's fine so he laid it down he said he got this senior trip going you know he's all hopped up and I got this senior trip going and said I've been working and saving and mowing people's yards and stuff and he said I got this much for the food I got this much for that and I still like this and that I don't know what I'm going to do and, he, and then we got to go next week and I don't know what I'm going to do about the, the rest of it and I looked at him I said I'll tell you what you do I said you figure out what you lack and whatever you lack I'll pay it he said really I said yeah whatever you like if you like a hundred dollars more I'll pay it whatever you like figure out what you've got covered and what, what you like and what you're nervous over I'll pay it boy he gathered up <laughs> left out there grinning went through the kitchen and Kay said what'd your mama say what'd your daddy say he said for me to figure out what I got what I got covered and whatever I like he'll take care of it <laughs> he went on through the house he's happy Amen. I come through the kitchen a few minutes and Kay said Kay said, well, said you made him happy. Said you told him what he said. You said whatever he liked, you'd take care of it. I said, yes, sir. That's what I said. I'll do it. But I said, don't tell him. But if he'd asked me, I'd paid the whole trip. <laughs> he just didn't ask me. And sometimes we're wrestling around trying, we're going, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? And our faith is short. We ain't going to be able to go. We ain't going to be able to make it. And God said on his throne, if you'll ask me, I'll pay the whole bill. I'll pay the whole trail. But you're glad God's with us. The shortest of our faith. He's still a very present help in the time. <laughs> but you're glad Emmanuel, God, with us. Then let me let me hurry up. He's with us in our supply. Boy, aren't you glad when, when we need supplies and we need help, God's there. I, I could preach all night right here. Brother Doug said one of these days he's going to have me come up here and just tell, talk all night about all the whole service about how God's supplied our needs and took care of it. It's amazing. Amen. We look back in our days, and my boys remember. My boys, we get to talking, and they'll come up and say, Daddy, tell about this time. Tell about that time. And God just took care. Ain't you glad God's there to take care of our needs and take care of our, our, our help and our, our, our hurts and our wants and our needs? He's there. He takes care of us and helps us. Amen. And then he's there with us in the shadows of death. Boy, aren't you glad when we get ready to die, he ain't going to leave us. <laughs> he's going to be right there. Amen. Stephen, my friend, they're stoning Stephen. Guess what? The Lord just stood up. <laughs> I don't know if he waved at him or what. It didn't like that, but old Stephen looked up and he said, Whoa, I done seen him. He's standing up. <laughs> hey, when I go through the valley, the shout out, Thou art with me. I remember when my mother passed away. I was worried. I really worried about my mom. For for when she, when they told her she had cancer, 
We was at Park West Hospital in Knoxville. They told my mother she had cancer. You could hear it. But Josh, you could hear it all the way down the hall. Two halls down, you could hear my mother screaming and hollering. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. She had such a fear of death. And from that point on, kept talking about death and things. And, and she'd get all tore up and fall all apart. Things about dying. I don't want to die. I got worried about that. Talked to a few preacher friends of mine. I said, I worry about my mother, whether she's saved or not. I said, she's got such a fear of dying. And said, and, and said, you mentioned death. I said, she goes to all the pieces. One preacher said, Brother Mike, the only thing I can tell you, it ain't time to die yet. But I never will forget when Mother, I was up here in Kentucky in the meeting, Shepherdsville over here, and they called. My wife called. She said, you better come home if you don't see your mom. I left the meeting and went home. Set up with Mother Friday night, all day Friday, Friday night. And Saturday, my mother called us all around the bed. And she said, uh, told her, every one of us, goodbye, said something. She raised her hands like this. She said, Jesus is coming after me. <laughs> Dropped him hands and went out, never came back. You know what? When it comes time to die, he is there. Yeah. Gave her that dying grace. Amen. I remember pastoring a man in Chattanooga. His name was the, the Reeves family. And Mr. Reeves, he had uh, both of his legs was gone. And, and he laid in the bed all the time and we want him to God. He got saved. And his favorite thing was every time he'd see me, he'd say, he's still real. Preacher, he's still real. That was his favorite saying. I'd go to visit him and I'd come in the door. He'd be back in the bedroom, laid up in the bed. And uh, she'd say, preacher's here. He'd say, preacher, he's real. He's still real. Amen. Went through all kinds of suffering and hardship. He went in a coma. They called me one night. He's been in the coma for a few days. They called me one night and said, preacher, can you come up here? I said, they don't think dad's going to make it. Just a few more hours. And and about midnight, so I jumped in the car and run up there, and families all gathered around the bed. And, and I mean, they was just sitting there wringing their hands, thinking, you know, well, I, you know, you know how it is. I want to hear Daddy say something one more time, or come around, or something. And they with get they 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 was on the random. The daughters were talking to him, Dad, Dad, and, and uh, trying to talk to him. And they with get Brother Slick. They said, Brother Goods said, Preacher said, how about you saying something to him? And I walked over and I leaned over and I said, Mister Reese, I said, this is the preacher. His eyes come open just like that. He said, he's still real, preacher. And he went right back out. In just a few minutes, he passed on the glory. Amen. You know what? <laughs> Ain't you glad God's with us? Yeah. That family grabbed hold of that. They grabbed hold of that. Brought comfort. Boy, aren't you glad in the hours of death, he's still with us. But let me give you this, and I'm, I promise you this is it. He's with us in the sweet hereafter. <laughs> Amen. The Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout. The voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God of sound. Dead in Christ arise first. Amen. Amen. And boy, you know what's going to happen? That vice verse says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. He's with us now in His Word and His Spirit. But in person, when we get to heaven, in person, He's going to be with us. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Never be separated. Be with us forever. Amen. Ain't you glad? Manuel. Next time you feel sorrow, next time you're going through the storm, just say, hey, I ain't in this by myself. God's with me. <laughs> just holler, Emmanuel, God is with me. God is with us. God is here. God's in my heart. God's in the Word. And one of these days we'll see Him in person. Amen? We'll see Him in person. He'll be revealed to Himself. And I, I love that phrase, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, you know, we, we have friends. We come and go. Come and go. We love coming up here. And uh, y'all say y'all love for us to come. I guess you do. But I'm just kidding. You. But we love to come, see everybody. Then we have to leave. Miss a little while before we get to come back. We go other places. Hey, we see them, fellowship with them, weak. And we have to leave. But boy, can you imagine what's going to be like? One of the days the Lord's going to come. Not only going to be with Him, but all the saved going to be together. Right. <laughs> Let me just water on this just a second. You ever heard these people say, well, I'm going to live on Hallelujah Boulevard. And somebody said, well, I'm going to live down here on Glory Street. Oh, no. When I married Kay, I didn't put her in one apartment, me in another one. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I moved her in with me. I went down there. Hey, whoa, let me just, can I share this? I, I, I ain't in five or seven. Listen. 
Brother Doug, here would be another hour. So anyway, you ever think about this? I remember when me and Kay got engaged. I was living down in Atlanta, working. She was living in Newport. And I went down there and I rented an apartment. Tammy, I, I know women wouldn't like this. But I rented an apartment. And I got furniture put in the apartment. I had all it fixed. I had the bed fixed. I had the refrigerator, the table. I had everything already done and fixed in the house. All the decorations, the pictures on the wall. I had everything. She had never saw it. Uh, I know some of y'all had it. Some of you women said, well, I ain't having that. That's why you got problems now. <laughs> uh, and then we'll forget. Went back to Newport. Uh, September 4, 1971. Went back to Newport. We got married. I put her in that car and headed to the house. I'd seen it. She hadn't. We walked in that little apartment. Everything's fixed up. Uh, she was so happy. She never complained, never said a word. She said, I love it. I had that place prepared for her. Uh, and we dwelt there. And our life was there. The Lord said, in my father's house are many mansions. Well, not so I go prepare a place for you. That's right. He built he built this world six days. Can you imagine what's going to be like? He's been building that over two thousand years. That's right. Huh? Can you imagine what's going to be like? I've not seen. I don't know what's going to be like. Right. But he's going to take us and marry us. And guess what? Yeah. He's going to take us in his own place. Amen. We'll all live with him. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.